Hey everyone, it's Yoshi and I play the bass. This week we have a gig where we're going to be playing in the forest, specifically in the Atkins Arboretum, National Music Festival, which I am an alumni of from 2012 to 2016, has partnered with the Atkins Arboretum on the eastern shore of Maryland to plant a few musicians, me being one of them, throughout the forest to create an ambiance of music and sounds while people are walking through the forest and they can just spot a musician and just say, hey, a musician, and then walk through the forest a little bit more and spot another musician, say, hey, another musician. And so that's going to happen for an hour. And we're going to all come together at the end to play a short set. Um, I'm really excited to play with two musicians that I've never played with before. Um, and I'm excited to actually play with one musician, Maria, um, who I've played with in a few facets. Um, played a few jazz gigs with her and played in a few orchestra gigs with her. And I'm sure I've played a chamber gig with her at some point or other. Amazing musician, um, amazing singer, um, just an amazing person. So super excited to reconnect with her. And this video, I'll go through the process of my preparation in uh, the week before um, in preparation for this gig, um, and then lead into the drive out, which is a beautiful, beautiful drive out to the Eastern Shore of Maryland. And uh, we'll hear some uh, clips and see some clips from the actual concert, including an interview with the executive and artistic directors of the National Music Festival, um, which will be later on in this video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now one of the first steps that I like to take when preparing for any gig is to listen to the music that I will be performing. So right now I'm listening to Sandu by Clifford Brown. And one of the things that's super interesting about this recording is that after everyone takes their solos and after the last drum solo, nobody comes in for the final chorus. And there's a whole chorus of just only drums and bass and keys. And then finally they play the head out. But I think that was a pretty funny thing about this particular recording. And I'm not sure exactly why. Comment down below if you do know why that exists. And I'm assuming it's because back then it wasn't as easy to get a band together through like social media to quickly organize a team and pass out music. And you had to really spend a lot of time coordinating that. Between that, uh, rehearsal time was super limited and recording time was also a lot more limited. I mean, if you think about it, you have to set up like all these mics and lights and you know everything you would need for a recording back then. Whereas now you can just click a button, hit record, and then do your thing, hit stop record. And then if you like it, keep it, you're done. And mics are generally a lot better now than they were back then. Or at least I should say, we have a lot better access to better mics. Now, one of the things that I also like to do is to multitask. My teacher, Paul Johnson, would say that one should never multitask because nobody can truly multitask. And while I agree with him mostly on that, I think one of the things that I like to multitask on is listening to music and working out. Because that's one of the things that I can multitask to use my time effectively because I like to use my time pretty effectively and efficiently. So with that said, let's get to some studying and some studying. Some other tunes that we played were Oblivion by Piazzolla, Autumn Leaves, and a few solo tunes that I had under my fingers and under my belt that, of course, I got listening to. The nice thing about the modern day technology is that you can make a playlist pretty easily. So whenever I have a gig, I always try to put a playlist together so I'm always continuously listening to the music that I will be performing. So after listening comes the actual practicing part. Now with standards, I like to play the melody, arpeggiate the changes, walk, and take a couple of solos. And let's do that now. Who better to do that than with Miles? Thank you. 
So one consideration I factor in whenever I play jazz gigs is if there is going to be a drummer or somebody playing chords. In this particular gig, I'm going to be the only member of the rhythm section, in which case I'll do some extra practicing to make sure that my rhythm and groove are beefed up because I'm going to be the person who's going to have to lay it down with no help and collaboration with a drummer or even a guitarist or a piano player. So I'll set my metronome on two and four, play that. I'll set my metronome on just one or just two or just three and walk to that and make sure I'm rock solid, really feeling the groove and really digging in my heels here. It's the day of, and we finally get to one of my favorite parts of the gig, which is the drive. Driving is something super peaceful and meditative for me because it allows me to just have time for myself to think and sit with my own thoughts and feelings that particular moment that I wouldn't necessarily give myself the time to do. So crossing the Bay Bridge to go to the Eastern Shore is such a beautiful sight, taking in the cornfields and open fields and farms and the most beautiful thing about this drive was actually driving into the Arboretum and taking a step inside, walking around the forest for a bit. It's a really beautiful place. If you had, haven't had the chance to go, definitely check it out. After settling in into my spot in the forest and unpacking, I play solo for about an hour, and then after that, we all get together like you see here and play a few tunes. After which we go grab snacks and we all depart and heading in separate directions, literally. But not before we grab a quick interview with Richard and Caitlin, who are the artistic and executive directors of the National Music Festival. We are here at the Atkins Arboretum, and we're here with Richard Rosenberg and Caitlin Patton, who are the artistic and executive directors of the National Music Festival, who are partnering with the Atkins Arboretum to create this awesome event. So can you tell us how this all inspired and came to be? Absolutely. Uh, forest music is something that we've done as part of the National Music Festival for the last few years, but it's usually during the festival in June. And of course, we haven't had a festival in June, for 2020 and 2021. So um, the Arboretum suggested that we partner and get together and do forest music at a different time of year. So here we are, perfect weather. Big and, audience. Uh, yeah, great audience. We were just thrilled with how it went and so glad you could be a part of it, Yoshi. Yeah, thanks again for having me. And w one of the things that I love about National Music Festival is that um, just there's a huge sense of community and it's not just bringing music to one same central location, but it really reaches out and branches out to different parts of the community. Um, so can you talk about maybe some other uh, opportunities that National Music Festival maybe has in the future or has done in the past? We have our Resonance series, which is essentially chamber music or music that's much more intimate, smaller numbers of players, and that begins uh, in mid-October, October 10th, with the Renaissance uh, group, crossover group called Earhart. Uh, we've had apprentices come back and perform. We've had professional ensembles this year. We have the Canadian Guitar Quartet and uh, two previous mentors from the festival. You've played yourself, and, and they're always well attended, usually with lots of snacks, which un un until further notice in pandemic is history, we're, we're suspending that. But it's always, um, beautiful place to hear music. Um, it's in a beautiful area outside of Chestertown and uh, good performances. What else do we do? Well, next June, hopefully we will be back to a pretty much normal national music festival. So uh, we typically do about 35 concerts in 14 days and everything from large symphony orchestra to small chamber ensembles in all sorts of different venues to go back to your point. It's not all just at one central location. We are out and about in churches and other community spaces, and all of the rehearsals are also free and open to the public. So hopefully that will be <laughs> back to normal next summer. Yeah, absolutely. And I spent four or five years at National Music Festival, and each summer 
I feel like I grew as a musician. So thank you for having me and, and helping me like grow as a musician with this festival and with events like this. So. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you. So now that I'm a couple of days out after the gig, I can definitely say that that was one of the most fun and interesting gigs that I've played in a while. And that's not every day that you get to play a gig in the forest. So super amazing. Caitlin, Richard, thanks for having me. If you liked watching this video, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. And be on the lookout because next week I'll be playing with the symphony orchestra and I will make a pretty similar video to this, you know, except for a different repertoire, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, if you uh, enjoy this video, then tune in for that one. And until then.